In this video, we're going to talk about computer equipment physical security. And when we talk about computer equipment physical security, these are additional security measures that we can take in addition to our site security measures that we already talked about earlier in this section. So we're not going to be talking about security guards. We're not going to be talking about secure doors and secure areas or video cameras or any of that. We're going to hone in on things that we can apply specifically to servers desktops and laptop computers. We're going to talk about mobile device security as well, but that'll be in a different video in this section. So when we talk about computer equipment, physical security, you're going to see that it's pretty basic. It's cut and dry. It's straightforward, um, but it's just adding an additional means, another compensating layer of security in addition to our site security. So let's talk about the most basic and the most common type of computer security physical security device and that's going to be our security cable lock which we have an example here on the left very common i have one of these for my work and if you have a laptop and you work for a large corporation odds are you probably have one of these as well now the way that they're typically set up is that there can be a key or there can be a combo and potentially even some of these there's an audible alarm on it as well so if something happens to it or if the systems move the audible alarm is going to go off as well now the one thing with these is that these are more of a turn than anything else they're really not going to stop somebody from stealing your laptop or your desktop or your monitor or whatever they are attached to because if you look at it there's just these four little tiny teeth or three little tiny teeth right here and they'll go into your desktop, your laptop through a little tiny hole and connect into there. And it's either gonna be through a little sheet of flimsy metal or plastic, and that's all that's really holding it in. So if you just give it a quick tug, you're gonna be able to rip it out of there in a matter of probably five, 10 or 15 seconds. And in terms of the way that the cables are set up to secure, you can set them up through a hole through a desk or you can put them through maybe some sort of a other device such as maybe a, a monitor's mount that's connected through or maybe a table leg or desk leg any of that type of things you can loop them through and they also come with a metal plate that you can screw down or that you can stick to a desktop as well and loop them through there and if you're putting them on those plates those plates rip out very easy as well so in the end, they're very easy to bypass, but they're just a bit of a deterrent. And let's say that somebody breaks into your office and you have 20 computers and they're all connected to these. Well, it just makes it a little bit harder for them to try to steal them. But again, if somebody wants to get your computer, if they want to steal it, these aren't going to stop them in the long run. Now, when we think about these, these are more commonly used, at least in, in my case, they're commonly used when we are remote. So if I'm going to training and in, um, if I'm in a training room, then I can use this to connect my laptop to the desk somehow in that training room or in a conference room and make it a little bit more secure. In an office environment, same thing, makes it a little more secure, but mainly they're designed for when people are remote or mobile. So that's our most common way of securing our laptops and our desktops and our monitors. Now, talking about our servers, the primary methodology that we would secure our servers are through some sort of a security rack. So servers are typically going to be housed in some sort of a server rack, and you should be able to lock them and secure them, whether it's a small rack for a small office or home office that you see here on the left, you should be able to secure it or if it's a server room with a bunch of racks. So here we have individual racks, which you see, and I'll just do this first row. You see all these different racks and, we, racks and we have multiple different rows. These are individual racks and these are lockable. And then they're inside a cage. So a larger rack that is a security rack. So we can implement defense in depth with multiple different racks and locking them into there as well. So. And this is a, another measure in which we can secure devices. And if we wanted to, we could potentially even put cable locks on the individual servers in those racks as well, which might be a little bit of overkill because typically servers are going to be in a secure area within the building where the people are going to have minimal access to and only the people that need access to it are going to have access to it behind a locked door. So that would be a server security rack. Now when we're talking about 
computer security and physical security. It's all about keeping our devices secure. And remember, there's physical security, physical access control, and there's logical access control. So in addition to these physical measures, we're also going to add on some logical measures as well. And that really is important when it comes to mobile devices and mobile device security and not having our data leaked. And so when we talk about mobile devices later in this section, well, even though this does tie into and this focuses in on physical security, we'll talk about some logical security measures as well, especially for tablets and phones and laptops. Um, but one thing that you really just always want to keep in mind is when we're talking about any of our computing devices, we want to keep them secure, keep them in a secure area, especially when we're talking about our servers. We want to make sure that when we're designing our site security and we are determining where we're going to put our server room, that it is in a secure area within that building behind a locked door with limited access. We don't want everybody having access to our server room um, and being able to go in and out. You want to make sure that only the people, only the IT personnel that needs to have access to it, have access to it and nobody else within the organization. So that's one thing to keep in mind is we always want to have them in secure area. And even when it comes to our desktops and laptop computers, within our office space. So where I work, our general office space is behind a locked door. I have to go through a locked door to get into a secure area, to get in a hallway, and then to get into my particular office space where cubicles are, I have to go through another locked door. So we have site security in place. We have multiple measures of site security before you can even get into your workspace. And then when you're traveling, you want to utilize additional security measures. So if you're traveling, if you're going to a conference, if you're going for training, if you are a contractor or a vendor and you're visiting one of your clients in your hotel, use your in-room safe. So if you have your laptop there and you're going out for dinner, put your laptop into the safe. Or if you're going to bed, put your laptop into the safe. Or put it in the trunk of your car and keep it in your car. So you just don't want to have it out and about. You want to make sure that you keep it secure, at least as secure as you can. So that's going to conclude our lecture on computer physical security, talking about servers, desktops, and laptops. Like I said, it's pretty basic. It's pretty cut and dry, but I wanted to make sure we covered this because this is going to be covered on the exam. So if you have any questions, let me know. If not, thanks for watching, and I'll see you at the next video. Well, I hope that you enjoyed today's video and you learned a lot from it. If you did, please give this video a thumbs up and also consider subscribing to my YouTube channel. Now, if you're interested in taking this full course or just learning more about it, check out the video description down below because I've included a link where you can learn more about the course and enroll into it if you'd like. So again, thanks for watching my video. I appreciate it and I look forward to seeing you guys at the next video. Take care.